All right, thanks for watching. And today I will show you how to find the equation of the tangent plane of a function, which is a very nice generalization of the tangent line. So let me remind you how to find the equation of the tangent line of f at a certain point. So suppose you have a function f that wiggles like that. So y equals f of x. And at a certain point, let's call it a, a, if you want, and this is f of a. Then remember, f has a nice tangent line defined at a, at least most functions do. And the equation of that tangent line it's simply as follows. Notice the line goes through a comma f of a. So it has to be of the form y minus f of a equals something times x minus a. Again, just because it goes through that point. And moreover, the slope has a very precise name. It's what's called f prime of a. Okay. And that is, for single variable functions, it turns out for multivariable functions, we have a, you know, um, a very similar formula. So now, let's do the following problem. So example, find the equation. of the tangent plane to the function f of xy equals 1 plus x squared plus y squared at the point 1 comma 2. So let me first draw a picture and then I will explain what this tangent plane is. So f of x comma y is like a parabola, think like y equals x squared, except a three-dimensional version of it, and you shift it up by one point. So it becomes something like that here, again in the x, y, z plane. So that's what's called an elliptic paraboloid, and again, looks like a nice generalization of the parabola. So this is z equals to 1 plus x squared plus y squared. And then we're focusing on the point 1 comma 2, which is somewhere here. And then if you just take the elevator up here, you get f of 1 comma 2. And notice, at that point, we have sort of a plane that kind of kisses or hugs the function. And that's what's called the tangent plane. The tangent plane at 1, 2. Almost think of it like, you know, like a pillow that just nudges your head or something. This is the same thing. We have at this point sort of a plane that kind of nudges or touches the function 1 plus x squared plus y squared. And the question is, what is the equation of that tangent plane? So here's the fact. The equation of the tangent plane of f at the point 1, 2 is as follows. So before we had y equals to something because we had a line, but this time, because we have a plane, it's z minus something. z minus something equals something else times x minus something plus something else, y minus something. Now, let's figure out how to fill in the blanks. So, First of all, the tangent plane, it has to go through the points 1, 2, f of 1, 2. 
That's why we need to have z minus f of something, f of 1, 2, something times x minus 1 plus y minus 2. And now remember, before what we had was y minus f of a equals f prime of a times x minus a. And what we would like to have now is just a bunch of slopes. And what this becomes, it's the slope of f in the x direction, which we call fx. So the partial derivative, but not an arbitrary point, but at the point 1, 2. And similarly, the partial derivative of f with respect to y at the point 1, 2. So that is the equation of the tangent plane. And what this looks concretely is as follows. Well, let's calculate fx. Actually, no, easier. Let's calculate f at the point first of all. So f of 1, 2, it's 1 plus 1 squared plus 2 squared. And I believe this becomes 6. Now let's differentiate f fx is just 2x, and at the point, so there's xy, and at the precise point, it becomes 2 times 1, which is 2, and similarly fy becomes, I think, 2y, and so at the point 1, 2, it becomes 2 times 2, which is 4. So ultimately, what the equation becomes, it's z minus 6 equals 2 times x minus 1 plus 4 times y minus 2. So this is how to find the equation of the tangent plane. And now let's just figure out roughly why this is true. I think intuitively it makes sense because because remember we have this interpretation of fx and fy as slopes. So first of all, again, remember we have this function And we now have the point, which now we know to be 1, 2, 6. So I think because the tangent plane goes to the point 1, 2, 6, it's clear that uh, it's something of the form z minus 6 is blah times x minus 1 plus blah times y minus 2. Strictly speaking, it's not that obvious, but you can take the equation of a plane and then turn it to be of this form. So, in other words, we already know that the tangent plane has this equation. Now, what is this first block? Well, all that it is, it's the slope of your function, but in the x direction. In other words, it's this slope here, it's kind of hard to draw, but if you think of this as being the x direction, then that slope, it becomes this thing. So what we know is this slope here, by this formula, becomes 2. That's why we get z minus 6, it's 2 times x minus 1. And then what is the second blah? If you kind of ignore this equation, what this becomes, it's the slope, but in the y direction, which is in this direction. And what we know from here is that the function kind of slopes up in the y direction. That's why the second blah is just a 4 times y minus 2. So this is how you get the equation of your tangent plane. And there's also another way of looking at this. It's simply 
if you're interested, but it's kind of the same explanation. So again, suppose we have something of the form z minus six equals something times x minus one plus something else times y minus two. Well, if you assume x equals one, so in other words, take this function and slice it through the plane x equals one. So if one, this is x and this is y, and you're just taking the slice, the horizontal slice, across the point x equals one. It's kind of hard to draw here, but then the question is, what becomes of this tangent plane? Well, if you take the same slice of the tangent plane across the plane x equals one, then what you get is just a line. So if you take this sheet of paper and you slice it horizontally, then what you have left is a line, but this line, it's precisely in the y direction. So y direction and z direction, and the slope, it's nothing else than the slope of the line in the y direction, which we define to be fy at 1, 2. So the slope is 4, and therefore, what we get is, if you plug in x equals 1 here, we get z minus 6 equals something times y minus 2. But then that something, again, it's precisely the slope of that line, which becomes 4. So in other words, this thing becomes 4. And similarly, if you slice this uh, in the other direction, like in the plane y equals 2, then the slice of this becomes a line in this direction, or I guess more precisely in this direction, whose slope is 2. And this is why we get that the first coefficient here is 2 as well. So. This is another uh, interpretation of why we have this equation of the tangent plane. All right, that's it for today. Next time I will give you applications of tangent planes called linear approximations and differentials. So I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.